Hi there, buddy. Just going to chat for a few minutes this evening. Unless I <laughs> start chasing rabbits and ramble on and on. But I'm not planning to. God has been humbling me. Pointing out some things in my life that I kind of messed up on. I confess one of them to you. A few months ago. About me boasting about the bees never stinging me and pouring honey on my hand so the bees would crawl all over my hand making that video. They never bothered me before, never, all my life from the time I was a teenager up until I was 70 years old. They never bothered me. But all that time I wasn't boasting about it until just this year. And in either the video <clears throat> when I got stung so many times or the video before when I worked the hive, I even said something to the effect that I need to stop bragging about it because they were going to get me someday. And right after I said that, they got me. And not only did they get me, but they made me so sick that I had to get rid of them. <clears throat> and that's just one example. There are many others that I didn't put on YouTube. God is working on me, and I reckon as messed up as my life has been, He ain't ever going to get finished working on me. I think I have probably been taken by him out behind the woodshed probably more times than 50 of y'all put together. And he's still taking me out behind the woodshed. And guess what? Every time he takes me out behind the woodshed for a good working over, it's because I deserved it. I love him. He and I are close. But like this good word says, those he loves, he chastens. And goodness gracious, <laughs> he must love me a lot. <clears throat> I know he does. To save a wretched old soul like me at 51 years of old, he must love me a lot. I have told him, and I've told y'all, that as vile as I was and as arrogant as I was, it's a wonder he didn't pinch my head off and shove it down my esophagus. That's what I deserved. But his love is so amazing, so awesome, so wonderful. His patience is everlasting, it seems. I don't think I could have the patience for anybody the way he's had the patience for me and I thank him for that. I thank him that his patience is everlasting. I don't thank him that mine is not everlasting. I do ask him to increase my patience and he has increased my patience a lot. You know the Bible says whatsoever ye shall ask believing ye shall receive and I'm going to formally quote that and read it to you shortly here he and I spend a lot of time together and I ask him a lot of things last night he gave me some stuff or yesterday afternoon actually early afternoon yesterday he gave me some stuff and I didn't do anything with it. And he gave it to me again this morning. I still didn't do anything with it. And he gave it to me again a while ago. And I felt a little trip out to the woodshed coming up soon if I didn't get off my butt and get on here and share it. So here I am.
I'm just going to read a few scriptures and I'm going to start in the book of Psalm chapter 23 verse 4 and you all know uh, Psalm 23 but I'm just going to read verse 4 yea though I walk through the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I have walked through the shadow of death twice. God's rod and his staff, they comforted me. And both times, I survived because of his grace, his love, and my faith and nothing else the first time was the accident that messed me up so bad and I was not a Christian then I thank God I thank God I thank God every day that he loved me enough to save my life and then three months later save my soul because if he hadn't friends I would be burning in hell 20 years this year if he hadn't saved my life that time. That woke me up. That is what drew me to him. That's what made me stop pretending to be a Christian and start being a Christian. He saved my soul after that. I stopped running from him. I stopped trying to hide from him. I became his after that. Let me mosey on here. All right, the next one is in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. And it says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Whosoever puts his faith or trust and the Lord shall be safe. There are Christians who do not survive an accident like I had. There are Christians who do not survive stage four cancer like I had. But they who putteth the trust in the Lord shall be safe, even if their safety is being taken out of this world and transferred to heaven. It's not always God's will for us to be taken out of the situations like I've been in. I don't know why it was his will for me to be, but I thank him that I was. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to mosey on over now to Matthew. And I got so much more than this these two pages I got to find the ones I got for this message Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 and 8 ask and it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Friend, that was Jesus himself speaking there. Ask, seek, knock. It takes faith. Exercise your faith. And don't ask amiss that it might be used for foolishness. That's a scripture also. I can't remember where it's at. Have faith in God in your prayer life. Trust God. Put God before yourself when you've got a situation, a problem, an illness, whatever it is. Put God first. Put your faith in Him and let Him guide you and direct you and don't try to do it yourself 
because I guarantee no matter how good you are, God is better and he will be glorified. And that's what we true Christians should strive for is so that everything in our life, even the trials, tribulations, turmoil, etc., 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 glorifies God, not us. And that has been a big downfall of mine for years. But I think God has got me straightened out on it now, finally. I'm stubborn, but he's got my attention. All right. Now the last one here is still in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 21 and 22. And this is Jesus speaking here also. <clears throat> Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So bam, there you go, my friends. There's nothing better to read than God's holy word. Because it is living, it is alive, <coughs> God speaks to us <coughs> through it as we read it. <coughs> we can read the same scriptures over and over and over for years and years and years. And it very often God will have a different message for us each time we read the same scripture again and again and again. The Bible is so much bigger, packed full of good stuff that we often miss if we don't read the same scripture over and over and over. So you want peace in your life, stay on your knees and in the Bible, God will give you peace. And he will move those mountains in your life that you don't think can be moved. He can save your life just like he did mine. I'm so fed up with doctors that I just, I'd rather go to God with an illness or an injury or whatever than to go see a doctor. I just canceled two appointments I had with specialists because I pretty much knew what the outcome was going to be and I would rather go to my God in prayer my God who is the great physician my God who created every cell and every molecule in my body than I would go to a to a doctor so, what I did probably, maybe wasn't smart, but that's what I did. I do have faith in God. I just try to not be arrogant about exercising it. So I won't elaborate because that would be me being arrogant. I don't want to do that. But I do have faith that God will take care of everything. <clears throat> I wish you'd take care of this that gum sinus drainage I have. It's driving me crazy. The doctor, last time I saw the doctor, which was, I don't know, three or four months ago, she told me to get uh, the Sertac allergy medicine and take one at bedtime every night. And I told her no. I said, that stuff, I, I tried it years ago, and it made me sleep like forever. I said, I won't take it. And she said they had a non-drowsy formula, so I got it. And I tried it, and it works. It does work. And it'll keep me fairly clear for about 20 hours, but not 24 hours. And 
You're just supposed to take one a day. So I got a few hours each day that it doesn't do anything for me, but it does work good. And they ran out of the non-drowsy formula. I ran out uh, of pills and I looked at every pharmacy in the southern part of this county and I couldn't find any non-drowsy. And so I went probably a week without having any. And then my pharmacy that I used finally got some in. So I got a bottle that'll last me a year. It was 55 bucks or 50, 56 or 59. I can't remember just under 60 bucks for that bottle, but it's, it's got a lot of pills. that will last me a half a year or more probably. Uh, so I got some more non-drowsy Zyrtec. But anyway, there I go rambling, chasing rabbits. Hasn't got anything to do with anything. I just like to talk to y'all. Nobody to talk to in this crazy hotel room except my cat. And she'll look, she'll lay there and look at me, but she doesn't ever talk back. Can you see her laying over there? Oh, that's not her. That's a plastic bag. I don't know where she is. Oh, she's on the bed over there. Look over there. See her over there on the bed? That's her side of the bed. My, this is this is my side over here. Uh, over, this is my side, and that's her side. So she's she's on her outside. <laughs> she she went to bed early. She's probably jealous because I'm talking to somebody besides her, and she don't understand me talking to this camera instead of her. Kind of weird technology, isn't it? I talked to the camera, and in a few minutes, y'all can see what I said. Go figure. All people all over the world can see what I said. Didn't happen when I was a child growing up. It would have never happened back then. I digress. I'm sorry. Talk to y'all later. I love you. Y'all cuddle up close to the Lord. If you don't know him, Repent of your sins. We're all sinners. Sin is what sends us to hell. God hates sin. Repent of your sins. Ask him to forgive you. Have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remission of your sins, my sins, the sins of the world. And through that faith, ye will be saved. And God gives you that faith. Bam. All right. Got it, y'all? I want you and you and you and you in heaven with me. You're not going to get there unless you ask God into your life. Jesus died for your sins. Whoever you are, Jesus died for your sins so that you can spend all of eternity in heaven with him. So let's do it, y'all. Let's roll.